the Minecraft world record you're watching right now was considered to be impossible to beat. Yet two years later, the time has dropped by nearly an entire second. You see, Minecraft bridging has become insanely competitive over the past few years, and players are slowly reaching the human limit, at times so fast that it literally isn't possible to beat without cheating. But it wasn't always this way. So how on earth did we get here, and why have players spent the past two years to improve a time by less than one second, when the world record on Minecraft's biggest bridging server, MC Play HD, first reached the supposed human limit, the time was 8.1 seconds using a strategy known as speed tele bridging, which to this day is still the fastest possible bridging method out there, yet somehow the world record has managed to drop by nearly an entire second, now sitting at 7.15 seconds. At the time of 8.1 being the world record, the speed tele was the absolute fastest bridging method out there, consisting of an extremely irregular pattern of going three blocks out for every block you go up, allowing for insanely fast turns and overall speed, much more so than the regular tele bridge, which before this point was the fastest known strategy, despite this method barely allowing players to creep under the 10 second mark. Over time, players would learn to integrate speed tellies into their regular tele bridge, slowly bringing the world record down to the 8.1 second mark. But this time of 8.1 seconds is where all the problems began. You see, after this point had been reached, players were completely lost on how to progress beyond this point in bridging, and the world record would sit at a complete standstill, so much so to the point where the record was tied more ways than anyone could have ever imagined. But things changed forever when a player by the name of Dugal invented a method called the Tap Speed Tally, a strategy that would go on to completely revolutionize Minecraft bridging and set the community into a frenzy of absolutely shattering world record after world record. Essentially, all a Tap Speed Tally is, is a speed tally where you tap your spacebar to jump instead of holding it down for the entire bridge like with a regular speed tally. Doing this saves one in-game tick for every speed tally you do it on, which for a mode that requires 12 to 13 speed tallies, was a massive breakthrough. Despite this, Dugao wasn't the first one to successfully do a tap speed on normal mode, with his successes mostly being on MC Play HD's short mode, something which I've dived deeply into in the past. Instead, the first tap speed to ever break a record was done by a player named the Silent One. After Silent broke the long-standing 8.1 world record with a time of 8.05, he quickly continued adding more taps, breaking every world record all the way down to 7.85, including actually skipping 7.95, going straight from 8.0 to 7.9. At this point, the clear path to more world records was still through adding more taps, but Silent quickly had competition, and it wasn't long before other top-level bridgers had caught up and also learned how to do tap speed telly. From there, both 7.8 and 7.75 were broken by another well-known bridger named 3Clicks. At this point, both players were competing with each other, each trying to add another tap to break the record again. Silent got two more records after this, getting a 7.7 .7 and a 7.65. But at that point, 3Clicks started to widen the gap, breaking every single record all the way down to 7.45 seconds, the first ever full tap speed tally. From here, players started to have much more difficulty trying to progress and break the world record further, as it wasn't possible to add any more taps. It was at this time that players began to utilize a movement strategy known as the head hitter. In Minecraft, hitting your head while sprint jumping lets you move slightly faster, so players on MC Play HD started to use the rock formation on the final island to construct a head hitter, which allowed them to get slightly faster times. In addition to this, the concept of gaining momentum was eventually introduced, a strategy which actually makes you gain momentum throughout your bridge, instead of gradually losing or maintaining it like players had previously. This of course allowed for once again ever so slightly faster times, but there was still one major problem. You see, while a full tap speed tally is extremely fast, speed tellies have one major problem. By the time you reach the end island, you're way higher than you need to be, and the time it takes to fall down to the play to stop the timer really does add up. To combat this, an already famous strategy known as the slab start, where the player starts one block lower than normal was innovated on, with players creating a way to do a quote unquote double slab start. A new strategy also slowly started to make its way into the bridging community, known as the four block flat telly. If you're familiar with the four block flat start that advanced bridges use, all this is is that, but repeated multiple times. Players have now also created a strategy to allow for a five block flat telly Telly start by backing up on the main island in order to give themselves extra momentum. Regardless, the key reason that the chain 4 block flat telly strategy is so fast is that it allows for you to move at essentially the same speed as a speed telly without going up. This quickly became implemented into normal mode, with players starting to mix them into their bridges in order to lower the air travel time when jumping to the final 
Island. And this is what allowed for Gecklo to shatter the world record with a time of 7.25 seconds using four four block flat tellies mixed into his speeds. After this point, Gecklo would go on to break the world record again with a time of 7.2 seconds, which interestingly enough only utilized two four block flats, as the five block flat slab start helped him still have a low air travel time. At this point in time, Gecklo is still the only player ever to have achieved a 7.2, while at the time of writing this, the 7.25 is tied 9 directions. But Gecklo didn't stop there. Almost exactly one month later, Gecklo broke the record again, achieving a time of 7.15 seconds using four four block flats, in addition to a brand new strategy known as the double head hitter, which lets players save even more time at the end of their bridge compared to a regular head hitter. And how did that feel to get two full ticks ahead in the record? Because I don't think that's happened since like well over a year ago. Yeah, it's really cool. I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but I just got it like randomly, so it was really Cool. The craziest thing about the 7.15 is that it sets Gecklo two full ticks ahead of any other player, something which hasn't happened in this mode in an extremely long time. Due to how hard it is for players to beat the extremely competitive world records, typically when they are finally broken, it takes so long for another record to happen that by that point several other players have already tied the current time. If the current world record now being two ticks ahead doesn't already emphasize how difficult the current world record of 7.15 is to beat, I decided to message Gecklo asking to interview him in order to further understand what makes this time barrier so challenging. It's basically the issue of like not enough momentum. We would need to learn something to do with late turn speeds to get enough momentum because the strats that are for 7.1 are just so hard by like today, it's like not even, I can't even imagine it right now. At this point in time, it seems the most likely strategy that will be used to break the record is something called the late turn speed tally. It doesn't exactly take a genius to figure out what this strategy entails or why it would work so well either. All a late turn speed tally is, is a speed tally where you face forward for longer and leave less time to turn around before placing the blocks below you, allowing for more forward momentum to be gained compared to a regular speed tally. Throughout the years, late turns have repeatedly been one of the most useful strategies used to cut time off of already known strategies and have even helped create famous bridging strategies that were used to break records, such as when players discover the 6 block late tally, a variation of the start of the bridge that allowed the player to be 6 blocks out after only the first tally instead of the normal 5. Considering how minimal of a change this would really be to player speed tellies, you'd think that players would be ready to break the world record any day now, but that's really not the case. At this point in time, Gecklo claims the human limit for normal mode is 6.95 seconds, which is insane considering how fast the world record already is. Despite this, Gecklo predicts that the world record won't even go below 7.15 for at least another 6 months, and reaching the human limit may take literal years to happen. Honestly, with bridging, it feels like new strategies are being invented every day, so figuring out whether or not this is the case is simply a matter of time. Subscribe so I can pass Dugile.